Okay, so welcome everybody. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, Christian Spotti, friend and collaborator, who's going to give a talk on geometric aspects of Keller Einstein metrics on GLT pairs. Okay, so thanks uh, for uh, the invitation. Uh, and uh, so today I plan to discuss uh, some uh, uh, properties uh, of uh, certain uh, Keller Einstein metric on certain. Uh, algebraic variety. I will start uh, with a general presentation of uh, what these things are and uh, uh, why we can uh, be interested in studying them. And then I will move on uh, on uh, some uh, result. So uh, generally speaking, the problem can be described as follow. So we start with uh, some uh, complex uh, variety. Um, at this level, we can even not assume that it's compact uh, in what I'm saying that now, uh, not smooth. Uh, it's uh, just to fix uh, uh, the ideas of what we are interested in. And uh, then uh, we take uh, some uh, divisor uh, and uh, on so a complex hypersurface on this uh, uh, variety. It could be also singular, the divisor itself. And uh, and they so we and we consider this uh, this pair this datum of uh, a complex uh, variety and uh, some uh, divisor and um, so the um, the question that we would like uh, to uh, to study is uh, is there a, a way uh, to somehow put some canonical geometry on uh, this uh, pair uh, and um, then can we study what are the properties of this canonical uh, geometry? And by canonical uh, geometry here, I mean um, uh, Keller-Einstein metric. So now, okay, to continue that. So, uh, so what are these canonical uh, Keller-Einstein metric? So. Uh, a way of uh, describing them is as follows. So uh, we will. Uh, consider uh, we want a metric that are indeed the Einstein metric on uh, let's say the smooth part of uh, our uh, variety and we want that uh, uh, near the smooth point of this divisor the metric is what is called a conical edge uh, metric and namely we are looking for metric that should uh, uh, resemble uh, um, some model metric uh, transverse to this divisor uh, that is uh, uh, equal in this uh, so that one can construct model metric near this divisor that in the tangential direction are just uh, the standard uh, metric flat metric while on the normal direction to this divisor one get uh, a metric like this, uh, that is actually uh, the description of uh, um, uh, complex one-dimensional cone, flat cone uh, metric. So this is away from the singularities, how this uh, metric we are looking at should look like. So Einstein and the smooth locus, uh, and when we approach this uh, hypersurface, at, at least near the smooth part of this upper surface, uh, should be uh, of this uh, uh, conical transverse behavior. So to make it a bit more formal <laughs> to what we mean by then uh, Keller-Einstein metric on, us on maybe singular variety, uh, the way to proceed is uh, uh, to say that actually our metric that we look in reality are a solution of certain uh, PDE. And uh, more precisely, we are looking at solution of certain uh, singular Mont-Jampere equation of uh, the following type. So we have, uh, uh, we fix some background metric and then we have uh, uh, the, the volume form and we require that is to be equal to the following mildly singular uh, um, right hand side. And you can see here, for example, that you can see the a section also uh, gives some kind of singularity uh, on uh, this, uh, this measure on the right hand side of the equation. So, uh, so when we will talk about a singular uh, keller einstein metric, we are thinking about the solution of this uh, um, geometric PD. But the point is uh, at this level- uh, Excuse me, can I get a question in right away? Uh, yes, uh, sure. 
Yes. Um, so this uh, um, equation that you have uh, written down there, this is an equation for phi or for f. This is an equation for phi. So we are uh, we are looking for a, a Keller potential. Uh, we fix a, a Keller metric o, omega naught, and we search uh, for phi. And then the um, uh, the Einstein um, uh, Keller Einstein metric that should come out. This is written down in terms of phi, similar to what you have written up there next to canonical behavior near. So then the Keller Einstein metric uh, would be uh, this uh, omega zero plus IDD bar of phi. I see. Okay. So uh, thank you. Yes, no problem. Okay. Uh, so, but uh, why one would be interested? Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I have a I have a question about that as well. If, yes. If the variety is singular, which yes. in your setting might as well be, can you really? I mean, it's omega not well defined. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, if you can, uh, you can think about a restriction, for example, uh, of uh, the if you take an embedding in, the, in PN and just the restriction of the Fubini study metric. This is a way ah, of thinking okay, about okay, fair enough. a smooth yeah, metric okay. on a singular. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, OK. Uh, but why we could be interested uh, in uh, that uh, metric, I will come back uh, soon on about a more existence theorem and so on. Uh, one of the reasons why one could be interested in studying this metric is because uh, uh, this metric can also be thought as uh, a way uh, when uh, one consider variation of uh, uh, this uh, cone angle along uh, uh, the complex hypersurface could be co considered a way to connect uh, complete geometries. For a baby example to keep in mind uh, of what I mean, you can start uh, in uh, uh, complex dimension one. So we have uh, uh, the standard round metric on the sphere that is Einstein with positive uh, uh, constant. And uh, on the other hand, and we have uh, we can construct uh, uh, if we remove for example three points uh, we have uh, like the infinite pair of punt uh, that is uh, standard with the standard complete hyperbolic metric uh, there and uh, and somehow we can actually interpolate uh, in a kind of a continuous fashion between uh, these uh, two geometry by uh, spaces uh, with uh, cone angle metric uh, so by looking at uh, uh, metric uh, with uh, positive curvature and uh, but with con angle then at some point you reach uh, the this flat polygons uh, on this sphere and then you start to have uh, hyperbolic uh, metric but still with con angle and then when somehow the con angle go to zero uh, you end up to find this a complete uh, metric so one can also think geometrically uh, about uh, this uh, metric with con angle as uh, a kind of an extension uh, of uh, uh, the space of a variety that give you a possibility of connecting uh, via different uh, uh, complete geometries. Uh, okay, and- uh, Excuse so, me, can I ask again? Yes. Uh, at the very first slide, you uh, uh, had your divisor D that yes. defines like how much cone angle you have uh, the coefficient is this uh an inter is uh, sorry is this a rational number or real uh so uh, it could be real uh in it could be real yes so you're <laughs> honestly interpolating like continuously yes one is honestly continuously interpolating yes uh, thanks yes okay uh then um so what uh, can we uh say uh, when, uh, uh, so I described what we should expect uh, at the generic point of the divisor when it's moot, uh, saying that uh, then the metric should be at this uh, 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 transverse model on this flat cone. But uh, what happens uh, when we are closer to a point where the med when the spaces are more singular? So this could be a singularity of uh, the ambient variety or could be uh, a singularity of uh, the divisor. So the, the ambient X could be perfectly smooth uh, and then you can have uh, a divisor that is a singular. So uh, we will focus uh, uh, today mostly on the so-called KLT uh, type of singularity for, uh, so most of what I'm saying uh, is in this, uh, under this more technical assumption of KLT singularity. I may touch at some point, uh, some remark about the log canonical, but not that much. 
so everything is KLT. So a typical example to have in mind of what is a KLT singularity uh, of, of a variety is like the ordinary double point. Uh, and uh, so that this, as soon as the dimension is at least three, is not a quotient singularity. Uh, and uh, uh, an example of a singularity of a divisor that uh, we will describe again later on uh, is we can take, a, for example, a, co a, a cuspidal curve. So some divisor is locally analytically modeled uh, to the standard cusp. And this, uh, then you see that there is a, a condition on the coefficient that one needed to consider, but this, uh, uh, this condition is precisely related to is precisely this requirement that I'm looking for KLT uh, pairs. Uh, as is, uh, so, so now going back, uh, so th there could be also this kind of singularity. And uh, so going back to this uh, problem of uh, then searching for this uh, um, Keller Einstein metric on spaces that can have this more general KLT singularity. And uh, by searching for metric, now we think about, uh, as I mentioned before, this a solution for these uh, uh, motion pair equations. Uh, then uh, the general result on the existence are as follow. So if one has that uh, uh, the first chain class of XD is less or equal than zero, uh, so a topological constraint that needed to be satisfied, then one can uh, solve uh, that equation uh, and one can find uh, some weak solution. More precisely, one can find uh, a potential that is bounded. Uh, one cannot really hope to get more than a bounded. Uh, we come back to later on. We, we, one can do something, but in this generality, when you fix this uh, background smooth metric, the best you would be able to see is a bounded. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, if instead you look at the case of a positive churn class, uh, this would correspond instead to the case uh, of uh, positive, uh, constant positive Ricci curvature, then uh, there is uh, a solution uh, that, uh, uh, so the, the, art, the state of art maybe is not fully complete, but is complete in many, many cases. And uh, the things that one uh, should uh, stress is that then the, the existence of this singular keller einstein metric uh, is equivalent to what is called capable stability, uh, this algebraic condition on the pair. And uh, so many, there are work of many people, like for example, uh, in the case of uh, non-positive friction classes, uh, this uh, work of uh, Isidio Gage uh, Zerahi. And uh, for the case of the Fano case, uh, uh, there are uh, work of many people uh, that uh, addressed this equivalence, uh, depending a bit on the setting. Uh, if uh, So uh, if we now go back to this uh, solution, so we have a solution of this equation, uh, then uh, indeed uh, one can prove that our uh, heuristic uh, that uh, near uh, the smooth point of the divisor indeed uh, one get that uh, the metric that one construct as a solution to this uh, differential equation is indeed asymptotic uh, to this uh, model at least in certain cases. So for example if we assume that both uh, the ambient space is smooth and D is smooth uh, and then you have a solution let's say of the motion per equation then uh, your uh, metric is indeed asymptotic uh, to uh, uh, the model product mat metric that uh, I said, uh, I described roughly before. And uh, in particular, it's equivalent metric, uh, but more than that, actually. Uh, one has a better asymptotic understanding. And, uh, and this also generalizes uh, for the case when uh, you have uh, that. Uh, uh, instead of a smooth divisor, the divisor has kind of the simplest possible singularity. So it's, uh, uh, it's like simple normal crossing uh, singularity. Then uh, instead of it being a, a, a model on a, a transversal cone, it's actually model on a product of uh, cones. Uh, so, uh, but the question is, what can we do now for arbitrary singularity? So in these special cases, we know that we have some kind of a model where we can say that the metric looks like to these models. But when the singularity becomes more complicated, what can we do? Uh, so, so, yes, from comparison with the previous uh, page. Yes. Uh, what you, yeah, so. So the weak solution is to the Monchamper equation, correct? 
the, the weak solution is this uh, omega zero plus IDD bar phi, yes. Yeah, and uh, for instance, the result of uh, Jeffrey's Maceo Rubinstein. Yes. How does that compare to what you have in this uh, last bit where you mentioned several people? So when uh, in the ACD against the Rehi, they, pro they simply find a weak solution. So uh, you, you cannot know so much about the real metric behavior when you approach uh, uh, the divisor. For example, the real metric is going to be omega zero plus IDD bar of phi. So there are, you would, in, in order to understand the metric, you would need to have some kind of understanding of the second derivative of, of, uh, of the potential phi. Okay, but, so, uh, so in this second part for Fano case, like the, for instance, your theorem with uh, Song Soon and, and Yao, uh, you don't have asymptotic. No, we don't have asymptotic. Uh, yeah, we don't have asymptotics. Yeah. You can imagine this is a kind of, uh, if you are more uh, analytic oriented, you can think, okay, let's solve this equation, find a weak solution, and then try to, uh, to get gain regularity. Uh, and one way of uh, thinking about this regularity and is uh, maybe understanding better how this uh, solution look like near, near the divisor, you cannot maybe phrase in terms of the potential phi is a infinity function. This is going to be too much, but still you can understand something by saying that then actually this weak solution gives some metric that is asymptotic to a model one. And so you can interpret this as a kind of regularity result. It's a way of thinking about it. Um, okay. So go back to the problem in what we should expect if we wanted to analyze what is the behavior of this metric uh, near uh, points uh, that are uh, more complicated, singularity that are more complicated than just a simple normal crossing point. So the idea is that uh, one should consider to get a model, uh, one could, can consider what are called the metric tangent cone. So, uh, this means that uh, suppo suppose that you are here, you have, uh, for example, a space with a, a singular curve doing some node. And uh, then you can put yourself at the point P and start zooming uh, uh, this uh, metric and passing to a limit. And uh, when you pass to a limit, uh, one should go to uh, some uh, more uh, model metric that has some more symmetry. This uh, actually it's some kind of a cone structure. So this picture should emphasize that here uh, is not, uh, it's, it's not this uh, um, cone symmetry, but after you zoom, you end up with a situation when you have this kind of conical uh, symmetry. So in particular, uh, one should have uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, this uh, uh, limit, the zoom limit, uh, more technically appointed from a house of limit, uh, is going to be a log Calabi-Yau cone. And uh, so it's actually, Actually, you can think as a real cone over a link that is a Sasaki Einstein metric in general with certain, again, singularity uh, on this Sasaki link. And uh, so this is the expectation. So then uh, somehow the model geometry in this situation should be the one of uh, uh, this log Calabi Yau cone, should be the model of the metric near this singularity. So what I'm saying, uh, one should be slightly careful because if you just uh, take uh, this weak solution uh, of uh, the Monge Ampere equation, in principle, you may not be able to talk about the pointed Gromov-House of limit uh, because you don't even know that uh, if you take uh, that uh, solution away from the singular set and consider the metric completion, you get a space that is homeomorphic to your original variety. Uh, but there are situations where this can make sense. And uh, these are a situation where uh, uh, one has that somehow the pair is uh, kind of smoothable to a, a, a smooth uh, situation. So one can deform to a smooth situation. And uh, then one can apply deeper result uh, of uh, um, limit of Einstein metric and, uh, and uh, be able to conclude that uh, uh, certain more metric aspects uh, are true and one can make sense of what is uh, a metric tangent cone in that situation. Uh, however, there are still some caveats uh, in full generality about uh, 
when this metric tangent cone uh, uh, actually is unique, for example, and in full generality it's not known, but uh, when things are like Gromov-Hausdorff limit of smooth object, then yes, things are better behaved, at least in the absolute case, meaning when there are not a divisor. When there is divisor, it's still open to really describe what should happen about these uh, uh, tangent cones, even uh, uh, if you take something that is a limit of a smooth uh, divisor, a uh, smooth pair. Uh, okay. Um, Luciano. Yes. Uh, so I think you, you wrote one about I, but isn't it I? Just I? Uh, uh, here? No, also the. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, it's no, it's, 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 it's yeah, it, it depends. <laughs> and oh. just here is, is simply like a, just a scaling up. What is precisely the scaling or whatever, I'm not really uh, describing here what. Uh... Wait, hello. You, you wrote I got to infinity. So. Ah, I see. So probably, yes, it's just, uh, yes, here I'm, I'm doing the opposite. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, it should be I times omega. I'm, I'm scaling up See here. I'm scaling down. <laughs> Otherwise, I go to zero. <laughs> yes. yes. Thanks. Uh, okay, so Actually, uh, algebraic geometers, uh, uh, after the work of uh, Song Soon and uh, uh, especially Chile, they figure out a way that one can try to understand algebra geometrically what should be this uh, uh, metric uh, tangent cone. Uh, and this is done by considering what is called uh, uh, this uh, uh, lo no local normalized volume. Uh, so, uh, I'm not really going uh, into much uh, here because it's not uh, the point of uh, the talk, but uh, uh, the point is that uh, there is uh, some functional on some uh, uh, space of valuation at the singularity that can be minimized. And then there is a construction that you can do starting from this uh, um, valuation uh, that first is, con is constructing some uh, space uh, coming from uh, uh, the natural algebra associated with this uh, spatial valuation. And then uh, one can, should uh, in, in general consider also a further uh, degeneration uh, to another uh, space. Uh, and this space uh, should be then uh, the, the tangent cone. And uh, there have been work, uh, many work by many people, uh, as mentioned, Lee introduced uh, this normalized volume, but then there are important work of uh, Wang, Xu, Bloom, and, and other people on that. Uh, uh, on that uh, aspect of the theory. Uh, so yes, in, in, there is an algebraic way of uh, trying to recognize what this uh, um, tangent cone uh, is. And also this theory has a very now good result, but in full, full, full generality is not completely over. Uh, the things are okay, for example, if you consider the generation of the smooth object again. Uh, but in general, it's more tricky. And uh, okay, so now this was uh, the kind of introduction. So just as to, to recall, so we are looking for this singular coherence metric. These are going to be solution of this uh, uh, Monchamp pair equation. Uh, and uh, and when we would like to understand the, for how the geometry looks like better near the singularity, we know how things should. Uh, uh, look like uh, at the near the smooth point of uh, uh, the divisor, and uh, in the reality, and we are trying to understand uh, more how this metric would uh, look like uh, as we approach uh, other singularities, more complicated singularities. So now, uh, I, let's move to some results in this uh, in this uh, direction, and. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's uh, uh, introduce, oh, I went, uh, uh, okay, here, I went probably one more up. So, uh, so first of all, uh, let's uh, put a, a definition. Uh, we say that uh, uh, some pair has uh, a stable uh, singularity. If we know that uh, near the singularity of this pair, uh, so th th this singularity is locally biomorphic uh, to some, uh, log Calabi-Yau cone. Um, 
So, uh, so, so basically, I, I find a cone, a complex cone, with also some divisor with some uh, cone structure, and we assume that there is on this uh, cone a, a genuine uh, Calabi-Yau metric, so Ricci flat metric on this cone. So the singularity that locally analytically are identified with uh, that uh, Calabi-Yau cones will be called stable singularity for simplicity. For example, if we go back to this example of uh, the CASP that uh, we know that is going to be uh, uh, KLT uh, from zero to uh, five over six, actually this singularity is uh, stable in the range between one over six and five over six. Uh, if you go below five over one over six, uh, then uh, this thing is not going to be uh, biomorphic uh, to a Calabria or tangent cone. So if you go back to this picture, in that situation, what would happen is that uh, uh, when uh, one computes the minimizer of this uh, informalized volume, the space that one is constructing is no longer biomorphic uh, to a neighborhood of your singular space, but uh, it's jumping to another space. In this case, it's simply C times uh, C with uh, some uh, non-isolated uh, uh, transverse con singularity. Anyhow, in this re regime instead, one can construct a very kind of explicit uh, a calabi metric uh, here via a calabi ansatz when it is in this uh, range. And uh, the construction uh, for, is as follow. Uh, so uh, you start uh, with, uh, you, so basically one construct a, a calabi metric uh, conical on C2 uh, that uh, is uh, conically singular along the cusp in, in, this, uh, in this range. And uh, the way to do that is looking at the two sphere and uh, putting there one metric with uh, a cone angle at a certain point. So positive constant, positive constant uh, uh, Gauss curvature uh, with some cone singularity. And then uh, one can uh, lift uh, this conical metric uh, to S3 and construct a singular Sasaki Einstein metric with, uh, uh, again, some cone singularity along some S1, uh, some fiber of the Hopf vibration. And then, when uh, lift uh, to all uh, uh, C2 and uh, constructing a Calabi uh, Yao uh, conical metric that is a singular along uh, this cusp. So actually one first uh, constructs something really along lines and then to go to the cusp and need to do some, uh, um, for example, some clever uh, covering trick, but uh, one can construct then on the cusp. So here is really a metric, uh, a Calabi metric on uh, lines departing uh, in situ, but with a covering argument uh, and then you can also construct metric on cusps. Uh, so this is a situation where you can construct this modeling me metric. So this is one of the singularity of a divisor that uh, we would uh, like to consider. And the one result in this direction uh, is, uh, is the following. So if we consider now a compact uh, uh, surface uh, of Calabria type, um, for example, it could be some uh, uh, it could be P2 with some singular uh, hyper um, with some singular uh, hypersurface uh, of a uh, degree three. Uh, and um, so, yeah, and uh, offerings of, of, of this type. So what, uh, what we can do then is the following, is uh, consider uh, a pair that is uh, KLT, but moreover, let's assume that the singularity of uh, the divisor are stable. So our model on this uh, are locally biomorphic to uh, log Calabi-Yau cone. Then uh, for any killer class uh, on uh, that surface, uh, we can construct a Ricci flat metric that uh, near uh, the smooth point of the divisor is actually uh, asymptotic to this uh, transverse cone uh, metric that uh, we said uh, at the beginning, but moreover, if in, instead we look at this near this stable uh, isolated singularity, we can also prove that omega uh, it's uh, not only as as a Calabi Yau tangent cone, uh, the Calabi Yau cone we assume to exist near uh, these uh, uh, these points, but we also have some control on uh, uh, the decay rate, the asymptotics of uh, 
this um, this metric down to the uh, Karabiao cone, and uh, and this is this asymptotic depends on some uh, property of uh, of the link of this uh, the einstein sazakian link, but it's complicated to compute actually what are precisely, but one can show that they exist. Um, so this is, should be kind of a picture, like uh, this is our X, this is AD, uh, at the generic point here we have a metric that is uh, the product, uh, locally modeled on this uh, product with uh, cone in transverse direction, while in this blue region we have uh, instead this, uh, uh, we say, polynomial uh, decay to this uh, Calabiao uh, cone metric. And um, some remark about this uh, this proof. Uh, so uh, this uh, this result actually the way that is proved is not proved by say okay we have the weak solution and then we analyze uh, how it looks like near the singularity, but uh, it's actually um, we simultaneously we we resolve we solve again the equation uh, by kind of starting with uh, some background metric uh, with uh, the desired asymptotic and then run uh, the ordinary Yao uh, original uh, continuity path for solving uh, the equation, but uh, in some uh, weighted spaces. Uh, so this is actually something uh, that uh, is, this, this theorem shares some is a similarity and with uh, the work of uh, Hein Sun when they study uh, the asymptotic of Calabiao um, metric of uh, singular Calabiao under similar assumption on uh, the fact that singularity are stable. Uh, but there are differences. So our is a logarithmic situation first, and uh, moreover, our argument uh, is actually uh, mostly uh, um, a two-dimensional argument uh, because uh, it's essential that our background metric that we construct has uh, some control on the curvature in order to be able to use uh, the Yao argument. Uh, so th th this Calabi Yao cone that we want constructed in two dimensions ac actually are flat cone. Uh, and this is, uh, is important uh, for the analysis. If you go higher dimension and you really need to consider just Calabi Yao cone, then just uh, the Yao argument uh, is not, uh, uh, is not uh, sufficient. One can try to generalize a Heinz soon, but then one would need a bit more result about the general property of limits uh, of uh, general pairs that are still missing. So it's a, it's a, kind, it's a kind of situation where one can do a, a more ad hoc argument to uh, solve uh, uh, this, uh, this problem of the asymptotics. Some interesting example for it could be like uh, a weighted hyperplane arrangement in P2, as, uh, as I mentioned. Another thing so, that is important to mention is that having these asymptotics, one also can, uh, uh, this asymptotic suggests uh, that there is uh, some kind of optimal uh, bogomolog miyoka yao inequality, where uh, you get uh, that uh, if there exists some log keller einstein metric uh, on some uh, pair, uh, it could be possible that uh, uh, C1 square uh, is actually bounded by three times this kind of uh, weighted Euler characteristic. Uh, where uh, you like, like, divide the Euler characteristic like um, motivically by removing pieces, then you have the Euler characteristic of the smooth part, some uh, the Euler characteristic of uh, the smooth part of the divisor with some weight uh, coming from the cone angle. And then finally, there are these isolated points where the things where uh, one should put uh, is uh, uh, these uh, info of normalized volumes, uh, that is uh, this functional that compute the tangent cone. From a Riemannian point of, point of view, this is supposed to be like the metric density uh, of uh, the singular metric uh, at, this, uh, at this point. And, uh, and in particular, one should get uh, this, uh, this, uh, this also suggests that when this uh, inequality is an equality, one should get a situation when uh, as a pair with uh, a holomorphic constant sectional um, curvature. And, uh, so there have been some uh, verification of this formula. Langer has uh, uh, approved using vector bundle with other correction term, but for certain singularity, uh, Chile verified uh, that this uh, info of normalized volume coincide with this correction that Langer did. So there is some indication that something like that may hold. 
As I said at the very beginning, one could be also interested in uh, studying non-compact uh, examples of uh, variety with uh, conangle singularity. And um, this uh, is a, a result uh, in this direction or in the non-compact situation. Namely, uh, here, if we consider uh, any uh, minimal resolution of uh, a two-dimensional quotient singularity, where we have uh, uh, any uh, finite group in U2 acting freely on S3. So basically, these are precisely the um, KLT singularity in two dimension. So if we consider a minimal resolution, then on the minimal resolution and on any Keller class of such minimal uh, resolution, we can construct a canonical metric in the sense that there are going to be um, metric that are Ricci flat and I have uh, some conical behavior, both uh, near the exceptional set and uh, at infinity. So the at infinity are the so-called ALE, uh, asymptotically locally Euclidean metric, meaning that if you go uh, uh, away from the singularity, we go at, at infinity of this, uh, this space, we get that uh, this uh, metric that we can construct, uh, this Ricci flat metric there, uh, decaying uh, to the uh, flat metric. And this is why they are called uh, uh, asymptotically locally Euclidean, locally because it's not just uh, the flat C2, but it's a C2 model or some, it's just a model of some finite group. And, uh, but uh, moreover, we have a con angle uh, behavior along uh, the exceptional set. So about uh, uh, this result, this result is again based on analysis, uh, is uh, also based on uh, uh, solving uh, the, the, the motion pair equation in weighted spaces. Uh, now with a, with a combination of weights that take care of the infinity and other weights that take care of uh, the behavior near uh, the divisor in the exceptional set. And um, as a remark, uh, we should also mention that this could be uh, considered uh, as um, also as a kind of a generalization of the result of Cronheimer of constructing a, a Calabi geometric on crepant resolution of uh, canonical singularity in dimension two. Uh, so uh, here is kind of an extension when you don't just uh, quotient by a group in SU two, but uh, an arbitrary group in U two. But you can still construct some kind of uh, Ricci flat uh, metric on the resolution, but there is a price to pay for that. You need to introduce a con angle along uh, the exceptional set. And this con angle along the exceptional set are kind of rigid, are fixed. You cannot uh, kind of play the game of moving now. Somehow uh, the, mm, the, the log discrepancy of the resolution fix what should be the uh, angle behavior of this Ricci flat metric. Uh, if you wanted to move uh, the con angle, you would need to go to maybe like a scalar flat Kähler or something like that, but not with Einstein metric. Uh, okay, and um, actually our work uh, here, I just uh, wrote uh, like a simpler version, also two dimensional, but uh, actually one can also, this is extend a bit more uh, because here the singularity of the divisor are mild, a simple normal crossing. So one can also extend uh, for more generally for log Calabi, asymptotically conical Calabi Yau setting and generalize in this uh, uh, pair version work of Gott, of uncovering and Conrad Hein. And uh, these spaces actually are also interested uh, when one study in general, uh, uh, like compact, um, uh, variety because uh, these uh, ALE uh, spaces they should uh, uh, be realizable as uh, some kind of uh, pointed grammar house of limit, uh, so a scale limit uh, now of sequences of uh, uh, Keller Einstein metric. So, and this actually introduces to the last uh, things that I want uh, to talk about uh, that is uh, actually the, some. Uh, uh, some discussion about the moduli problem of such uh, of such metrics. So till now we have focused mostly on uh, this uh, describing some property of uh, uh, of their geometry and some examples where we can say something. Uh, and uh, now instead uh, I wanted to discuss about uh, if you consider a family of uh, this uh, Keller-Einstein metric. 
So here we can actually start uh, uh, to, to, to introduce this by looking at uh, the complex one dimensional situation, uh, because there is already something interesting happening here, uh, even in the, like, the positive curvature case, uh, where usually if we just consider constant uh, uh, curvature, there is basically nothing uh, to say, it's just a round metric. But if we introduce a con angle, and we look at now, so metric on uh, P1 with uh, uh, con angle, it's uh, well known that uh, this uh, log Keller Einstein metric, this singular Keller Einstein metric uh, with con angle at a point on the sphere, uh, exists precisely when there is uh, uh, this, uh, okay, there is a, a condition. This is uh, basically saying that uh, we are looking for uh, the looking for positive uh, uh, metric. Uh, and uh, so this is basically the, it's just the log of fortune class in that uh, in this situation, uh, and uh, and here instead is another condition that relates these uh, the, the weights of uh, the, this coefficient in front of the divisor. So the existence is not always granted. It's, uh, it's granted only when one has uh, this relation on the weights. Uh, that in turn, so this is uh, nothing else that uh, uh, log a, a k stability for uh, for that pair. Uh, so the trial condition actually can be just uh, realized as uh, uh, you, you can constru construct for people who know a bit of case stability, you just uh, put, uh, you stay on the point A, I say alpha I, and ju just consider an obvious C star squeezing all the other point uh, to infinity. And this gives you a test configuration. You compute the Donaldson Futaki invariant, and this uh, Trojanov uh, uh, condition is the Donaldson Futaki invariant for this uh, um, test configuration. And um, so in particular, uh, regarding moduli, here we are free now, besides the, that there is this condition, we are actually free to move uh, the points. And what it turns out is that uh, uh, if we consider uh, the moduli space of all uh, this metric, we all the points merging together. So when uh, can construct from a metric point of view a compactification, let's say Gromo house of compactification of this uh, space of singular metric with points can collide. And uh, this is a situation that uh, one gets that this uh, compactification is actually homeomorphic to uh, a classical GIT quotient uh, that is just uh, the natural one associated to this problem. So we take uh, k times a copy of P1, as many, as many copies as is the number of points on P1. And then at least for rational uh, coefficient, otherwise one would need to go a bit more symplectic, but at least for rational, uh, uh, coefficient, then we can uh, pick up uh, a linearization uh, where uh, we take uh, as uh, ample line bundle just uh, uh, the one that is uh, scaled uh, uh, with uh, um, exactly, this is a Q-line bundle with coefficient that are precisely the weights of uh, uh, that we put in front of our points. And uh, so one has this identification of this uh, space of uh, limit of this metric uh, uh, with this uh, uh, GIT uh, quotient. So uh, in, in, in particular, this uh, Trojano condition that is equal to case stability is also coincided with the hilbert manfort criterion for uh, in, in this uh, situation, looking at one parameter subgroup inside the, this uh, space. And uh, note here that this example is a situation that now is a bit, start to be rich. This is like the first example of this variation of a GIT phenomena. So when we vary this, uh, uh, the cone angle, actually the corresponding uh, modular spaces are going uh, uh, to change vibrationally. Uh, then we can, uh, if you go back to the picture that I made at the very beginning that one can interpolate between the geometries, uh, then uh, instead of looking at the case of uh, uh, positive uh, metric on the sphere, one can instead look into flat metric on the sphere with a con angle. And uh, here one can uh, still uh, uh, look at uh, some kind of a metric compactification. So here there are a bit of some kind of a subtlety, but uh, so here uh, one can still identify uh, this uh, metric compactification with uh, this JT quotient. Let's say that the, the identification is essentially okay for when there are, for generic choice of uh, these weights when there is no collapsing occurring. Otherwise it can still identify the, with uh, this uh, quotient, uh, but it's a slightly more com slightly, one should just be a bit more careful what you mean by that if there is some uh, collapsing of uh, this uh, flat metric, but it can still identify with this quotient anyhow. So, um, 
but um, yeah, that is, but generically one gets this uh, still this JT quotient. And uh, a remark that I want to make on this particular modular space uh, that actually have been studied by Deline Mosso and other people is that uh, uh, this uh, modular space uh, uh, actually carries some uh, natural uh, metric uh, that is actually the Vine Peterson metric in this uh, case, uh, that in this specific case uh, turns out to be some complex hyperbolic metric. And uh, with uh, Martin de Bourbon, we analyzed a bit uh, how this uh, Weil Peterson metric look like uh, then in these uh, very special uh, cases uh, from the point of view of this uh, log uh, Keller Einstein metric. So we know that the Weil Peterson metric is uh, in this situation is complex hyperbolic. So in particular, it's Keller Einstein. Can we understand uh, how it looks like in sense of finding a, a metric model of the behavior of this uh, uh, Weil Peterson metric near uh, this uh, boundary of the modular space? And what uh, uh, we can uh, uh, prove by analyzing, uh, basically by uh, analyzing some work that Tarston uh, did, and uh, that uh, we can actually uh, um, look Richard. at. Uh, yes. Uh, so can I ask a question? Yes. So how how you rescale the metric? What? Uh, the... So, so for generic alpha uh, alpha i. Uh, there is no collapsing. And, uh, uh, the generic cho uh, so choice of uh, uh, AI, generic uh, choice yeah. of the weights, there is no collapsing. And uh, then uh, uh, in certain situations, there can be collapsing. And, uh, but uh, this collapsing, uh, actually, it's, uh, um, it's, it's kind of a very explicit. And, uh, and basically, what ends up in the modular space here is that uh, in this JT, there is a point missing where you don't know what, uh, which kind of meaning to give, but somehow uh, the collapsing kind of correspond only to point remove in this, uh, this quotient. And, uh, and then it's uh, in that situation, the metric near that point, the Weil Peterson metric, is just uh, some fully cuspidal hyperbolic metric. And, uh, and then you can still make sense of, uh, uh, you, you, so if you, when there is a collapsing, you can still identify with this quotient when you normalize with constant diameter. When, when you talk about collapsing, at the beginning, what do you fix? Uh, so we fix uh, the, the cone angle, but uh, you may have a ah. configuration when the, the, the flat metric on the sphere is actually uh, collapsing, uh, collapsing down. Um, I think to, to, to a segment, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, so the, 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 there are these, uh, these possibilities that will collapse to a, a segment, but when it's collapsed to a segment in these modular spaces uh, are kind of uh, just, uh, just point. And uh, actually the Vipeterson metric near this point uh, is uh, some kind of uniform collapsed uh, um, hyperbolic cusp that actually can be constructed starting from an ansatz from, uh, uh, so somehow the link is going to be some flat uh, hyperplane arrangement. Uh, and then uh, you can build up uh, some cuspidal uh, metric uh, complex hyperbolic via generalized Calabi ansatz. And um, yeah. so it's a situation there where you can uh, basically get a situation that uh, uh, one understand a bit more also things like the Van Peterson metric and, but it's very, very special and there is probably not so much uh, that one can take out from this example for very higher dimensional generalizations. And um, yes, but uh, to conclude and uh, then move to the final uh, slides is- uh, Can I ask a question before you move on this theorem? Yes. Sir. Is this for the case of P1 or is it for anyone? No, this is just a P1 with a flat metric on P1. Right. And um, it's going to be very. At the, risk, at the risk of abusing the question, is there a significant step in going from P1 to Pn? Uh, I think uh, probably yes. Uh, uh, I'm not so sure that is, for example, a complex hyperbolic metric. I would need to think, but it doesn't seem 
so obvious to me. Yeah. Okay, also, thank you. There may be something that one can try to see, but probably it's not completely obvious. And um, yes, so like just to finish here, the com the final comment that I want to make is just that uh, this metric, there are kind of boundary component that correspond to just, for example, collision of points. And then the metric generically is of uh, uh, transverse of conical type. And then you can compute uh, like the cone angle that is forming uh, in relation of uh, uh, the weights of the two points colliding. And uh, then there are like deeper strata where you may have uh, uh, more, not, the boundary is not smooth, but uh, there are deeper strata where instead the Valpitas of metric is modeled on a Calabria or cone on some uh, uh, hyperplane arrangement on PN of special type. And then as I was mentioning uh, uh, in the question that uh, if collapsing happening, there are further other points that we need to consider. And in this situation, the metric uh, instead is complete near this point, the Valpitas of metric. And there is uh, some kind of a cuspidal behavior, but also this cuspidal can be described as a Calabian ansatz from certain flat hyperplane arrangements uh, in PN. So, so this is one of situations where one can find an example of log Einstein method that could be a higher dimension that could be understood uh, asymptotically. Um, yeah. Um, so I think that probably I almost say what I, in these this three comments uh, I already remarked about that. Uh, yes, the proof is a combination of Terrace and McMullen also ideas. And, um, and of course, uh, for even higher dimension, we expect more complicated things to happen. Then finally, one can also go back to negative curvature. Then in this situation, this compactification of log Einstein metric with a negative curvature should be identified with some Hasset spaces of a weighted curve. There are also some uh, results on the Valpitas geometry here. And one can also start to analyze a uh, question like how, for example, the Valpitas on volume varies when we vary a parameter passing through geometry, uh, different geometries. And um, yeah, so finally, uh, uh, so what about uh, higher dimension? So we now in the last uh, five minutes, uh, I wanted to uh, briefly say something in higher dimension. And, uh, and in higher dimension, I will focus now on the Fano case. Uh, so, this, so we will look at, at positive uh, uh, Einstein metric and uh, try to see example of uh, a compactification of modular space uh, of these uh, uh, pairs in the final situation. I won't go into discuss anything about Calabi-Aus or negative Keller Einstein. And uh, so can we find some concrete example where uh, in higher dimension where we can generalize this uh, picture of Trojanov uh, where we study this uh, uh, metric and uh, compactification and maybe related to some explicit uh, quotient. And there are situations, for example, uh, with uh, uh, Jesus and, Pat and Patricia Gallardo, uh, we investigated uh, the case of uh, uh, some complex hypersurfaces uh, in CPN uh, in a low dimension, like dimension two and dimension three. And, uh, and there we have a, a result that can be considered as a kind of a generalization of uh, uh, Trojanov type of a result for the matter with positive uh, um, kind of angle on the on the on P on P one, and uh, here we we find out that uh, uh, one can understand when uh, uh, these uh, pair are going to have a Kellerinsta metric for uh, uh, the parameter uh, a the con generically the cone angle uh, being uh, small close to zero. Uh, and uh, it is explicit, uh, but uh, for, for him, we can get an estimate of what does it mean to be close to zero. And uh, but uh, so when it's close to zero, so small cone angle, uh, then we can see that the existence of a weak Keller Einstein matrix, so a singular Keller Einstein matrix on CPN uh, with singularity along this D, is actually reduced to the GIT stability of uh, uh, this divisor D uh, for the natural action of the automorphism group on the space of hypersurface uh, in CPN. So in particular, one can infer that the Gromo house of compactification of uh, this uh, modular space of this metric is uh, 
getting uh, uh, identified with uh, the um, uh, with uh, the GAT quotient, uh, the, the natural GAT quotient of the action of SL on the space of uh, uh, polynomial. And uh, so, um, some remark here. Uh, so, I cannot really see what I wrote, but uh, so some, uh, some remark. Uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, this, this can be also generalized in other situation. And uh, maybe a remark that is important is that uh, if you look uh, at uh, um, a quartic in P2, uh, then uh, the case when the con angle is precisely equal to one uh, over two is related to certain modular space of the Delpezzo surface, smooth Delpezzo surface. In particular there, uh, this situation have been, uh, was uh, uh, analyzed by myself and uh, Odaka soon uh, um, many years ago now, and uh, in, in this uh, situation, one actually uh, could see that uh, it's not uh, uh, in, for this situation the Gromo house of compactification, let's say, of uh, Keller Einstein metric uh, on uh, P2 and a quartic, uh, say the smooth quartic, uh, is not uh, uh, just uh, the GIT quotient. There is something more that goes on. There is a uh, to, one needed to perform, perform some uh, aberrational modification at the uh, double uh, uh, double conic uh, here, and um, and this is can be done via some uh, um, uh, blow up uh, here one type of blow up, and one can still analyze what it is the modular space, but it's not the JT quotient, and it's important to mention that uh, recently. Uh, there have been work of uh, people, uh, Asher, the Fleming, Liu, that uh, actually they study much more in detail exactly when uh, this phenomena uh, of uh, variation of GAT happen in this precise setting when we consider P2 and an hypersurface and see what are the walls. And also they developed a bit more general theory for modular space of pairs. Uh, but uh, yeah, so somehow there is situation of a, a Kind of a variation of JT uh, that is happening, uh, but uh, it's not uh, maybe um, it's, it's morally a variation of a, of a JT. Maybe it's not explicitly a variation of JT as in this example when it's uh, to do some key or blow up. So finally, uh, uh, just uh, uh, um, an idea about how the proof of this uh, uh, theorem works. Actually, the idea. Uh, originated from this uh, work of with uh, uh, with Song and uh, Odaka that I mentioned. Uh, so the idea is that uh, one uh, start uh, with uh, smooth pairs, and then uh, one uh, try to study a uh, property of uh, a priori property of uh, the the generator um, Gromov house of limits, and. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, one can try to get uh, some uh, information uh, on uh, how the singularity uh, are, how bad they are, and uh, this is somehow translated in some uh, uh, one way of measuring how bad they are is in terms of, of the metric density or algebraically this info normalized volume of valuation. And, uh, if one has some kind of explicit lower bound of this info normalized volume of valuation in this specific case, one can find a certain geometric property that this limited Gromo house of uh, uh, this Gromo house of limit of smooth pairs may satisfy. I don't know, like the canonical is actually a line bundle or things like that, and. Uh, and then one can start to use a classification or classify this kind of uh, degeneration of pairs with the canonical satisfying this property and uh, figure out that uh, they admit some natural embedding in some space where uh, somehow our modular problem we are interested in uh, kind of match uh, with uh, some uh, underneath symmetry of uh, this uh, space where we embed uh, the object. And by studying uh, uh, this modular problem there, uh, then is uh, able to create uh, these kind of identifications. Um, this technique I mentioned here for brevity and uh, also to relate it to the Trojanov case, the case of hypersurface, but uh, with Jesus, we also uh, we investigate a situation where both X and D vary simultaneously. Uh, more precisely, we investigated a case of uh, a cubic surface with a hyperplane uh, section. And we have also a result there when we bo vary both uh, uh, the ambient space and the, uh, the divisors simultaneously. And uh, one of the things that somehow this result may suggest 
is that uh, uh, a kind of uh, conjecture of um, um, a conjecture about the existence of this uh, uh, conical Kelly-Rhein symmetry for small cone angles that one may expect that uh, somehow one should be able to detect it uh, by seeing some property of uh, uh, the action of uh, the automorphism on the actual uh, smooth uh, gadget. So if we start with something that has a Kelly-Rhein symmetry, uh, smooth uh, Pano, for example, that uh, is a reductive automorphism group, uh, and then uh, one take D that is an anti-canonical section, let's say for simplicity, then uh, the automorphism group uh, that is a reductive because uh, it's, it's Keller Einstein is going to act on this space of section. And uh, this example suggests that uh, this, uh, the existence of uh, this uh, log Keller Einstein metric uh, uh, on this pair may be detected by this action of uh, uh, this JT stability for the automorphism group. And um, yeah, I think that uh, I'm done. Uh, so yes, uh, as I mentioned before, there may be interesting study also in this situation of uh, property of uh, by Peterson metric and so on. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you. Uh, do we have questions? You can unmute yourself and ask directly, or if you're timid, you can ask in the chat and I'll read them out. Okay, I'll ask a question. To the best of your knowledge, uh, so this conjecture that we have uh, hasn't been, like there's no progress on it, right? No. Okay. If I remember at some point, you said something about the kind of, the one with finite automorphism, or maybe there is some, but... Uh, yeah, in that case, I think it's obvious. Yeah. It's always obvious there, but I have never thought really about, uh, about it. Maybe... Yeah. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much. It was a very complete talk. Uh, I like how it started from more analytic to more algebraic. Yeah, okay, well, thank you. Uh, so next week, I had this open a second ago. Uh, next week, it should be Alexander, Alexander Puklikov uh, and Jürgen Hausen. So we'll see you next week. I'm going to stop recording now.